Welcome back to Deadly Premonition, and now we're gonna check out the special menu that opens when you when you finish the game. God forbid, are we actually gonna check out the director's cut for that extra bonus content? In a moment. There is one, there is some stuff that I want to show still in the base version. What? Oh, hmm. yeah, we never actually did look at what the whole menu was like, did we? That's okay, so, me. on the special menu we have a television, which allows you to watch the pre-rendered scenes. Not all of them, just the pre-rendered ones. So I'm curious, how come you never showed us what were on either sides whenever we went in here during, you know, our main playthrough? I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't understand your question. Could you repeat that? You never showed what was, you know, to the side of the table. The like you're showing oh. now. Oh, that. No, no, this is not the same menu. It, it, it's just the same background, Joe, but this is the first time I'm showing this menu, technically. No, I'm more, I'm more surprised that you didn't show us the, the side quest involving with the you know, gun shop owner. Yeah, true. That's the thing, Teo. That, that, uh, uh, that side quest, Teo, doesn't really have any story interesting shit. It's just, oh, there's shredding cards. Collect them for me. Okay, thank you. And that's it. Little, there's literally no character that's given to Wesley. Uh, that <laughs> and, and here are the photos that were in the others too for the vacation. So yeah, so yeah in, what are you talking about, Teo? This was a research trip to properly create. And to be fair, there are a lot of environments in Greenville that are clearly inspired from some of these photos, mm -hmm. to be fair. So it's not you like know, this was just a vacation, to be fair. You gotta wonder what the locals were thinking when they saw a team of Japanese men just... They, well, it, tourists? It's exactly what you can imagine tourists, you yeah. know. If only they knew that soon. It's, it's, it's like the tourist from Space Channel 5 where well, remember, Joe, but... in just taking photos. Well, anyway. remember, Joe, the developers at Sonic Team, before they made Sonic Adventure 1, in order for inspiration, they went to... I forgot where it was. They San went... Francisco? No, 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 no. That was, that was for Sonic Adventure. That was because they lived in... They were in San Francisco, working in San Francisco, Joe. But that was oh, when it comes to Sonic Adventure, I think it might have been New York City that Station Square was based off of. Yes, but there was also another place they visited that it was in the inspiration for the for the temple in um, in Mystic Ruins. But I don't remember the exact country they went to. I'll have to look I it up. I would think that would be Mexico, given we the look of the... Look at it. We have like cooking photos. And now bonus. Look at that, Taylor. There you go. See? There is actually... Uh, a deer, a, a stuffed deer that was actually inspired by the thing. There you go, see? Um, anyway, this stop weird. sign inspired a lot, too. There you go, there's the, there's the, um, the tunnel. There you go, there's Sorry sw right, doing something with two, I don't know what he's doing there, and there you go. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's doing something. Probing, probing the truck. <laughs> uh... <laughs> The inspiration for probably for Keith. Okay, so what about that door though? In order to open that door, you have to get you have to do a specific old school type of code, as in you have to do a specific select of 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 uh, options. There we go. It says right there: TV eighty twenty five VB fourteen. That little note that you see while you're going through the animation to get to this bit, that's your hint to the special code to open the do the mysterious door. So what does this translate out to? Simple. You play cutscene number 35. Of course. Then you go to the jukebox, aka the sound test. There you go, even, that's where I get the names of the, um, the, the tracks. There you go. Track number 14, Miss Stiletto Heels full version. After that, we move here. We have to go to the coverage photo. Or is it the trading card first? I actually forgot about that from, from now. Yeah, I think Is I'm. The deer comfortable there. Yeah, the, no, the, that's the thing too. The, whenever you put the jug box on, the deer hums to the music. Now you have to open <laughs> Polly's oh, trading no. card. Now you have to open up Polly's trading card. Oh, Polly. The owner of the hotel, a bit on the pushy side, but full of good intentions. He enjoys talking, but is hard of hearing. There you go. He was a nice gal. And now you have to go into the coverage photo section and select a specific photo, which is. Uh, PT. <laughs> <laughs> it's all connected, guys. It's all connected. You have to select nature number three. There you go. I can't believe all this time swearing was stealth hinting. Yeah, and you get was going to be the latest Silent Hill game. So yeah, that jingle confirms that you've done the code correctly. Now you can go into the door. Let's see what's behind it. Oh, the white. Oh, the, play is that? the white room. Let's see what we can find here. Another door. 
another mm. door. We're not really getting anywhere. We another are too. Door. Don't worry, Teo, we are. Yeah, this reminds me of the uh, bit door. in um, Enter the Matrix. It reminds me of what the room you're looking into oh. the Matrix, oh. where it's just yours. It's, it's, that, it's that really long corridor you get in the sequels. Look at that, it's York in front of another door. Ah, what do you have for me, York? The sweary trading card. Yay! <laughs> Thanks, York. You're just looking at you, kid. AKA, this is sweary telling you. Thank you for playing my game. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Let's check that okay, trading card, why not? Let's see the sweary trading card. The director of this game, he created that the premonition was inspired by the small towns in the northwest. He loves big hamburgers and can't live without ketchup. There are many easter eggs about him hidden in the game. Try to find them all. Yay. So, so let's see. So, Stephanie Meyer was inspired by the northwest to make Twilight. Sweary was inspired by the northwest to make Deadly Premonition. It's a matter of perspective, really. Mm hmm. Okay, not. Can you imagine a deadly premonition and Twilight crossover? No, thank you. For as, for as weird as it sounds, I can potentially see it happening only if it favors the the you know, the DP side. So let's see. <laughs> so let's see what happens if we go back into the white room after getting the card. No, it's, it's like is it like GTA, but the plate with and there's no Easter egg anymore. Get get away. <laughs> let's see. Now, it's an endless loop. You've already got the quest. You can't go back in here anymore. It's, a demo it's one of the demonic dogs being stuck here. Oh, oh. this time oh. Emily. Emily. Oh, there's Yurik again. Well, remember, they're together, <laughs> so. How's it going in the afterlife? It's great. I get free refills on my favorite drink. Excellent. So it's KFC. I said drink. Basic, so yeah, basically, yeah. basic is just a little Easter egg so that fans can just you know be reminded that at the very least things didn't end entirely badly. So again, oh, you're on the chicken, not the juice. Again, all right. So that was the base version. But before we move on to the director's cut, let's check the original Rainy Woods Tokyo Game Show 2007 trailer. Let's see how the original game was before it got reworked. Oh my god, he looks oh, goodness. So like Cooper. Yoke had some plastic surgery. No, 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 this is how you originally looked like. Uh, Teo, would you mind? Yeah, it does look like... like oh, like look! Like someone, the saw Twin... dwarves of... someone saw Twin Peaks, didn't they, Teo? Oh, let me guess, let me guess. They got replaced with Oh, the with killer the was a bit different as well. I, and there you I go, This the... you know, George originally looked like the sheriff from Twin Peaks yeah. as well. That's why I we can needed the mask. Thomas this. was supposed to. Oh, okay. Weird. Becky looks more like Anna in this scene. Well, remember, it, it was still not finished. So, oh, and notice, notice how Michael says it differently this time. In this trailer, actually. David Young Henning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which was his original name. Yeah. And originally, it wasn't supposed to be the red room with flowers. It was just supposed to be the red room from Twin Peaks. But and of yet. course, the two dwarves became the and no kids. But I guess David Lynch found out about it. Not so much David Lynch, the, the, the people that own the, the IP itself. Not so, David Lynch doesn't actually own the IP. Coming 2008, it, yeah, no, it's going to be delayed for uh, two years because we had to rework the game because we got in trouble. <laughs> you know, probably I'm just biased because we have been through the entire game, but I kind of like more York final design. Oh no, I agree. And now, the Premonition Director's Cut on the PlayStation 3. Oh boy. I think it helps that you know York. Oh god, the absolute worst. Well, no okay, point, no, no, no. Game, deadly no, the worst draw is for PC if it doesn't work. No, this not is. Of all, of all the, the Director's Cut versions, this is the best one. Because after. Wait, I mean, wait, don't, wait. don't get me wrong. I thought, I thought the. I thought the Switch version was no, the, the best version. Ever. The Switch version still has issues, Jova. Uh, the driving well, in particular is terrible. Doesn't Even... the PS3 version have issues up the wazoo? The PC version, yes, but the Switch no, version no, is a no, bit better. The PS3 version. It does have sh uh, Jova, but still less than the Switch version. You can oh. actually drive okay in this version. Alright, so the Deadly Premonition Director's Cut was released in 2013, exclusively for the PlayStation 3, and got later ported to the PC in 2014. So, 
Oh yeah, the Vampire Hunter game. No, actually, it wasn't. Uh, they just that, that's just a leftover from the original scene because this port was developed by Toy Box Games, aka the company that did all the ports and had the permission too as well. Thanks for giving us a sequel, guys. And as you can see, already you can tell that the lighting is and coloring is different in the director's cut. That's because for the director's cut, they removed the green filter and the bloom effect to try to achieve a more natural look. My issue with that, and most Dead Premonition fans prefer the look of the original because, as as and it's going to become a bit more obvious when I see, when I talk about later scenes. But I personally think it was one of those cases where I think they don't get me wrong. I think that this new look. This is just me. I know that some people disagree with me, including Shiro and Teo. But uh, I personally think this new visual style for the game broke more than it fixed, but that's uh, all I'll say for now. Let's just get so into it. I, I personally oh, I only saw one bit of it. Uh, let me probably Oh, see the lighting it. suddenly we changed. We really no. saw one scene. Okay. <laughs> What's wrong, Dwebs? Something wrong, Dwebs? Um, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'll just let me see the lighting, lighting myself. Oh, okay. Uh, wow. uh, oh, not, like not a fan of this? Pain. Not a fan of these visuals already? Or is it something else? I mean, else? it's fine, it's just, uh... Oh, so you're with me, you don't care much for this new look. Well, it's not all that much of an improvement so far. Uh, well, well, let's just, uh, reserve judgment for the end, though, because there's still more to come. Let's just try and... Okay, there's this still... This scene at least looks a little more... whims... Not whims, like... Not saturated, either, it just yeah. looks... Basically... Actually, yeah. Actually, actually, see what the what the tree is supposed to be brown instead of green. Oh boy, the uh, the, the magical whimsical story of deadly premonition. <laughs> <laughs> so in this scene, I guess they were implying that Anna was turning into. There's also a bit more detail on the body. For example, you can see the cut. Well, it's 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 case in that turns women into red trees, Joe. Um, jo uh, George it, was though. just sacrificing her for the supposed immortality that Kazen promised him. That said, though, yeah, I was about to say, see, unlike, you know, what Emily was turning into or York's mom, the other girls didn't turn into the hollowed out corpses that, you know, you turn into when the trees do their thing. My issue with this new look is that it looks a bit too gray grayish. I get that a lot of maybe some people may not like the green filter from the original. But I don't know. It's, it's it looks a bit too grayish and devoid of color Again, for my taste. It's a blue point remake with a filter option. <laughs> <laughs> that would and be. I think this scene in particular is very colorful, but the the diner scene, well, not diner, the hotel scene, sorry, is quite the different scenario. It's, that's the interesting thing, Shiroi. The lighting even is a bit inconsistent, even. The but 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 we'll see. We'll see. Let's just uh, get more into it. Mm -hmm. The premonition in the bottom left corner. However, hold well on. The director's cut Ooh. also creeps in right there at the corner. There you go. <laughs> it just slides awkwardly this there. Guy, you, <laughs> this ain't your average game you're playing. All right. So here is the title screen. We, 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 let's skip the rest of that scene. We've. I think we've. I think I've. Sh I've made my mm -hmm. point when it comes to that bit. So the direct, the, the promotion of this cut starts off with a fireplace. So you might be asking, wait, there are no fireplaces in the original. Well, that goes into the new cutscenes that were added because there's a new subplot added into the director's cut. Oh uh, boy! Uh, written and directed by Swery once again. Um, mm. Okay, so the first thing we have to do, just as always, is go to the options and make sure the sound mixing is as as best as it can be. But you guys already oh know that. God. You guys already know that. Okay, I think I'm actually going to show something now. Okay, here's another problem, by the way, guys. The premiere cutscenes, some of them at least, are still the same. Notice how the epilogue cutscene is still looks exactly like in the base version. Remember, that's because remember this cutscene is pre-rendered, so they can't just go back and you know redo it. Redo it. Isn't that the idea of what a director's cut is supposed to do? Well, Jova, ask Toybox. <laughs> When the clock tower was built. Okay, I, just want, I, just want, I just wanted to show how that scene still looks the same. So. Sure. I noticed that the that the menu overlay is different. Like you're yeah. outdoors as opposed to in a room. Yeah, there's quite a lot of a lot of visual differences from this one. There you go, Joe. With the chapter select that I was mentioning. Okay. All right. So let's start chapter one. 
But skip that. We've already. Even the icons of some items are different. Exactly. All right, new cutscene. <laughs> and once again, Amazing Grace. <laughs> what is what? I guess Swery. Uh, I, 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 I guess Swery really loves this song. Hello. I wonder how you felt for Far Cry Five. Uh, why is the music cutting in and out? It's doing it again. More like the kid is humming at a different tone. No, the weird thing is that the music was cutting in and out. Oh my god, it looks so different from the base game. Yes. Of course. Wait, your guy? No, that's Zach. Zach. That's Zach, yeah. Well, Zach got old uh, and he got a family. Yeah. Oh. This story. So there you go. Grandpappy Zach now is going to tell oh. Emma and he's going to tell his granddaughter about the story of Greenville. Because as we all know, that's a great story to tell to a child. <laughs> and by the way, child, there was this victim that was actually impaled through the mouth by a statue. Heck, not even that. This child is a little girl. It's so See, granddaughter, there was this tale about story. all these women getting murdered here. Why am I telling you this? Tell it's you to teach you a story. lesson to be a good girl. I want to hear it. I didn't this, get that this, this uh, uh, he's, he's about to say it, actually. Hold on. This oh. looks like a PS2 FMV. Guys, it's okay. She Please promised she won't be scared. Yep. Yeah. And then by the end of this, she never sleeps again. <laughs> all right, pay attention. Right, here you go. This is listen. This is, this is important. This so she can learn this. That he's about to say. At times, we must purge uh, things. Yeah. Because so that maybe if she has to make that choice, she will be able to make the correct one. So let me guess. The major thing added in the director's cut are scenes uh, involving these two. Exactly. Basically a vehicle. Okay, so one of the first gameplay changes that they made was that they made the camera uh, be and be more like a typical uh, game you'd expect, where the camera is a bit more zoomed out, so you can see more, and the camera is actually can actually be turned around. Um, this makes some stuff like the bosses a bit easier. To be fair, I'm not gonna say that everything about the structure's cut is bad. There are some genuine improvements, like the, like this makes fighting the boss battles easier. However, here's the problem. Remember the overhead view we had for the puzzles in the milk barn? Gone. Gone. And that means that we that that, that that means that we have to do those puzzles without the overhead view, which makes them a lot more frustrating than than they should be. Uh, it's like playing modern mode of Bomberman X Zero. Yeah, let's totally take out the top-down perspective in a Bomberman game. You're also noticing the frame rate. They also they also removed the old-school Resident Evil-style fixed camera bits. Like, for example, also, the, the, you know how when you're going up a stairs, the camera will ch suddenly change? Like in the old Resident Evil games? They also removed that from the director's cut. Also, I'm just going to say it. I totally called that little kid yeah. being Zach, or I guess in this case, Yorick's. Yeah, oh, hold on, so uh, I think Pedro wants back. to talk about these room. Well, not yet. Um, I really need some not yet, to be fair. Then we can head to the sheriff's office. What, what is it? Is there, is there something There's wrong? Like I said, I totally called exactly. the younger kid being York's younger well, so. Alright, here's the problem with the premonition director's cut. The draw distance is abysmal. Oh! <laughs> but what, what is going on with that frame rate? Say, see, that's exactly the problem. You see, for don't get me wrong, I'm by no means trying to say that the original release was a technical showcase for the 360. It wasn't. <laughs> but for all but for all its problems, the frame rate was fairly consistent for the most part, and the draw distance was competent. That's not the case with the director's cut. And look at that, the game just dropped to zero frames for like a half a second there. Did uh, the Switch version at least fix the frame rate issues? It, oh, it, God, well, well, if it helps you, Jova, it did uncap the frame rate, so it, it runs at 60. It's an incredibly inconsistent 60, but it's a 60. <laughs> I love how you went from 0 to 60 frames all of a sudden in that one bit. What the hell? All right, here's the issue. Okay. You might remember the hotel as a colorful place that looked relatively fine. I, at least I would argue so. My problem is that... 
because of the grayish devoid of they stuck out this my problem with the visuals of this director's cut and this would be the base for all subsequent ports so you have to deal with this uh with this new color scheme i just think they this new visual style broke more than it fixed if i'm going to be talking about, yeah we don't have the bloom anymore yes but they sucked out all the color from the game look york's color in the original game looked Never typical fits. Caucasian skin color. No. In here, it looks like a metallish... I don't even know how to describe it, but it definitely doesn't... I don't know. There's just some... Maybe it's just because most of us, the Deadly Premonition fans, are used to the original, because that's how we were used to playing it. So maybe newcomers would be a lot more open to it, even if they saw a comparison like we're seeing right now. But still, I don't know. I just think they sucked out way too much color out of the original game, to be honest. Well, I mean, it's not like the I mean, it's not like the original was the most colorist thing in the first. Oh, it wasn't, Jova does, but I don't know. I still think this these visuals broke more than they fixed. To be honest Maybe with you, it varies from scene to scene because the first scene with the tree was very colorful. That's the thing, she right. That's exactly it. It varies from scene to scene. That's the problem. <laughs> it's incredibly also, inconsistent. Say what you want about the original game, she right. It had a consistent art style, not a very good art style, but a consistent one. <laughs> Oh, I, I have no get. major issue with the way the original looked as flaw as it was. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. You know, it's weird. The first game was technically in a lot of ways crap, but consider this. Ports or slight retouch-ups or remasters that were supposed to make the game better. All right, other That's sort of a net value kind of made it worse. It's broken. Yeah, these cutscenes look so different. Well, that's because they were made, but they were rendered in toy by Toy Box rather than Access Games too. I'll admit these cutscenes actually look relatively nice. I don't like the girl, the little girl's model, bro. It looks so different from any of the other models in the game. She looks like Wednesday if she were a brunette. It's because, Teo, the original art director of the game did not work on the director's cut, so this is them uh, trying to emulate what the original game was, but not doing a very good job at it. I've never been to a movie theater, though. What does this have to do with the story he's telling her, I wonder? Well, that's because he asked her, like, do you like you like movies, don't you? Remember, Zack loves movies, so... And there ah, you go. Okay. And there you go. Like, as you can see, the outside of the hotel also looks different. Mm -hmm. This is the thing that I disagree with, because I think this new redesign for the Imperial fun. and the aesthetic of buildings, I think, works a bit for the better. Um, most of the colors of a building is... Oh, wow, God, that is bright. That, as you can see, yeah. there's still some bloom left. They were mostly like yellow or gray or green. So, yeah. Instead, here we give the more rural um, town in the woods archetype. Oh, look at that! The frame, oh the God. frame rate drops Whoa. when we're check when we're watching uh, one gross. of the objects. But oh. but look at the bright side. They reworked the HUD, the, the, the user interface, that you have a okay, new okay. screen for the health, you have a new we're supposed to whatever. Go through, okay, I'm gonna say it. The fact office, that the Switch version of these caps, the frame rate is probably you. gonna make it more preferential is your than, echoing? than this version of yeah. the director's I guess we wanted to add an echo effect to the line of dialogue referring to York's internal thoughts. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. But yeah, I'm gonna say it's like the Oh yeah, that, 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 that's the thing too. A lot of dialogue in this version is has a lot of reverb and echo effects, and I don't understand why. Again, say what you want about the sound mixing of the Actually, original game. Just did for this at least. I don't know if it. Oh, it, that, that, that's the thing, tale. It's random. Some lines have it, some lines don't. I have no idea what the hell happened here. But a lot Any of that. be like, well, when it's echoing, it's for York's inner monologue, and I guess when it's not, it's because he's speaking out loud. That's the thing, Jova. It happens to a lot of lines. It, it's random. It's not just York. It happens to all over. That's the thing. Um, I will say, I will say this though. I will admit. The outside, when you're exploring Greenville, does look better uh, in this version because of the lack of bloom. You can actually see the trees green and all that stuff. So this is actually one of those things that were genuine. I would regard as a genuine improvement. See, I'm not entirely down on this version. Um, like I said, so far, okay. So what exactly do you? Oh God, the scattering! I can hear it there too. That's big the thing with all directors cuts. Yes, uh, remember to Joe, but this was the base for oh look at the, the draw this <laughs> Oh god. Oh. That's the thing, Jova. Remember, Jova. Remember, Jova. This P this PS3 director's cut was the base for all ports that came after. 
again, again, again. The, the fact that the Switch version released caps the frame rate kind of convinces me that that would be the best version. Well, the best way to, you know, well, actually, the director cut. Well, actually, the Switch version doesn't uncap the frame rate. It, it, it doesn't cap the frame rate. It uncaps it. It leaves it at 60. The problem, Joe, is that it's an incredibly wildly inconsistent 60 that never stabilizes. That's the problem. Sounds like in Golden Axe Beast Rider. Wasn't that kind of the case of this game here? What was it being uncapped? No, no, no. The original version was no. All versions no. of the all versions of the of the game are capped at 30, except for the Switch and PC versions. So why is this one's frame rate constantly going up and down? Because Joe, but let me introduce you to Toy Box. They're terrible at coding. There you go. So even though the frame rate is technically capped, it's not actually capped. It's, oh, try it's trying to reach a 30 sec uh, frames per second, but it fails horribly. Wow. And you can see uh, Greenvale Sheriff Department looks different a bit. All right, here's another cutscene, the one where we were introduced to Thomas. Mm-hmm. You know, in hindsight, no wonder Thomas was York, tired. We've been expecting you. Is he, is he, like, um... Again, it's that just, I don't know, like, it like feels too gray. Like, there's too much gray hues yeah. in this game. I don't, they sucked out all the color. Don't get me wrong, the original game didn't look like a Van Gogh painting or anything. I'm not saying otherwise. I think York put it well. Zach, things move slowly in this town. Yeah, especially in this version. With the goddamn frame rate. Yeah. The frame rate in this, uh, in the toy box version is good too. Fortunately, when you're playing on PC, if you can get it running, so most of the time it will probably run at a good 60. It, it, it does on mine. I can't control it, but at the very least, the frame rate is, seems good. And Unless on I... the plus side, at least the sequel will, you know, properly pat be pat. So yeah, so far, uh, well, uh, right, as as of the time of this recording, it actually has g um, come a long way since launch. To be fair, so okay. Yeah. All right, so that was about it. I just wanted to show a bit of it. Let's go back to the main, to the cutscenes. So Pedro, how much do you like this edition in the director's cut? You know these extra scenes. Eh, okay, okay. Oh, I, I only really care more for the final one. The uh, the rest of these are a bit. Eh, I don't know. They're they're fine. They're not bad. But uh, at the same time, I'm, I'm not gonna. I wouldn't lose my sleep over uh, if I if these were cut. I will say this, have we actually played the game with these? I would have guessed from the get-go that that was Zack, or, you know, I would have guessed it to have been York, but you get what I mean, though. Like, sure, sure, sure. I like sure. Jeffrey Kramer, but he doesn't exactly hide the voice that, uh, well, with his, um, older voice, shall we say. Well, it's not really, you're not really meant to, it's not really trying to hide. I think it's pretty obvious that it's most likely Zack. If they're pros, then we should let every first person... Yeah, we are again. What a story to be telling his granddaughter. Might as well show yeah, one, of the other, one, the one of the other one one of the other world uh, scenarios. Okay, the other world scenarios are probably the ones that don't really, at least in my opinion, get harmed by the noir style because the, these sections were always meant to be grayish in hue anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, I don't mind. the lack of bloom actually helps things be creepier because then. Oh yeah, of course in Resident Evil fashion you can get a rocket launcher. Sure. I don't... Again, I'm not... Again, I'm not trying to di entirely this this version. It, it does... It did bring some improvements here and there. I just don't think... I just don't think they were worth the incredibly worse frame rate, the bad echoey in the... the bad echo... In fact, the sound mixing is even worse in this version. Um, and, and like I said, I still think... I, s I still think we could have made the game look better without sucking out all the color out of it. Because, I don't know, I just don't particularly care for how grayish the, the most of the cutscenes look. And York's, York, again, York's uh, typical Caucasian skin color doesn't even come across like it did in the original game, to be, uh, to be honest. Oh I god, I feel like it's one of those many games in that stupid long turn of people thinking, Oh, if it's got to be properly HD, that means it has to be grayer. I don't think it's so much that. I think I, I, I attribute this more to incompetence rather than malice, to be honest. Well, the two aren't mutually exclusive, but I see your point. Sure. That's a, though, like I said, 
I feel like it works better in the other world stuff because now yeah, it, it allows mean. stuff to be darker as opposed to, you know, well, stuff being in blue. Zero was more colorful than this. Ooh, Dwibs comparing something Shots fired. to Bomberman X Zero. Ooh. Well, look at it this way, Dwibs. If you ever plan on playing this game, you'll be able to get it on your Xbox Series S, which will be the best version the, okay, the original 360 version improved even more thanks to the Xbox backwards compatibility. So, because I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, Act Zero is still a really dour looking game, both you know, intentionally and unintentionally. But I mean, at least you could have the actual bomber men plus women in a very bright color. If you notice, wish. yeah, and now, uh, okay, I don't think I did. I, didn't I? I feel like I had showed it. I wonder if you were going to show up the profile. Too much noise. Yeah, yeah for some reason. Okay. Uh, no, no, no. I'm going to show it now. Uh, or when we get the first clue. Sorry. I, I probably should. I don't even remember why Do I skipped that. You actually show one of a chasey, and I wonder how the frame rate compares. Uh, that's a thing, too. I didn't really want to waste too much time with this version. Not. It's not so much that I hate playing this version, too. It's just that because, you know, I, I, I wanted to keep... I, don't, I didn't want to keep this going for way too long more. Cause sure, it, sure. I just wanted to give you, you know? a basic gist of it, really. Uh, but I will tell you that the frame rate, from what I remember in the chase scenes, is not the best, but I don't remember it being it like unbearable if it helps you. So, okay, were there any parts of the PSV version that you absolutely did find unbearable? Uh, specifically when the frame rate shits the bed and in some bits, and the terrible draw distance that makes it that sometimes I can't even see things until I'm right next to them. So, better question. Are there like any points where the game is consistently, you know, a crap for a cycle? Is there like any one infamous point in the game, gameplay wise, where it just refuses to work? Uh, the draw distance. Especially when you're in the hotel. Here's what you do. You do the same thing that Kokuri Media did in his vi in his retrospective video. Go into your hotel room and look at your bed and keep going closer and farther away from the bed. And you'll notice that the further... Notice how they also changed the t the, the, the videotape in the pro uh, Now that it yeah, looks more like visual film. Mm-hmm. So there you go. That's the, That's another pointless visual alteration that they did i don't really i don't even think this was necessary but whatever it's not it's not it's not it's not that it's a, it doesn't make the game any worse mind you i'm just wondering why they didn't even bother um it was the basic point is it's abundantly clear that there was a different art director working on this version who had his own idea of how this game should look But yeah, um, well, that's the thing, Jova. Like, it's one of those things where it, it, it's one of those things where, again, I'm not by any means trying to say that this game ever looked good. It never looked good. But I still stand by my position that I still like the way the original game looked better. Um, to be honest with you, it. But anyway, except for these scenes, like these scenes actually do feel like oh. a proper improvement. Oh, these scenes look. F oh, the look of the scenes is fine. I don't really have an I issue. I disagree, actually, on that. Again, the, the design of the girl just doesn't match, and the the, the way they're presented they remind me a lot of PS2 FMVs. I'm sorry, Dave. Could you repeat that? Was it the really black tint at the top? Well, I don't even know, Dave. To be perfectly honest with you. What's so, Bomb is still not to be scared. Oh. There you go, there you go. Oh uh, my uh, god, he kept one of those! He, he kept the sapling, as, uh, uh, apparently. <laughs> uh, what? What? I'm sorry, honey. There you go, it's confirmation that it's Zack. Well, I guess anyone unsuspecting would think, Oh, maybe it's York, but aged up. Wasn't it? Ah, uh, toy it. I want to give you. Wow. That's still uh, it's pretty. Jeff Kramer. Mm -hmm. it, it's Jeff yeah. Kramer, yes. Charm, like a signpost. It will help to lead you through your life. A signpost? One day, my dear, you will find out 
one of the truths of this world. That the world is filled with contradiction. <laughs> and Wouldn't it be funny if she ends up being the protagonist of one of the sequels? Or if this is how that crossover you want to make it really begins. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the world is full of inequality and uh, injustice and all that. Interesting. Then she hijacks the series from Phoenix, right? Meaning finger point. <laughs> yep, it's definitely Zach doing that classic finger point. <laughs> I love how his face is completely encompassed in shadow. Oh, he named her Emily. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess. Or rather, his, his daughter her, her, named her yeah, Emily. Yeah. So there you go. This is right after the ending of the game. Forest. Of the original game, at least. Even now, she is still in the forest with York. Aww. She watches over the world from there. Emily became a goddess. That's right. Isn't that a lovely ending? Yeah! Can I ask you something? What kind of person is York? And what was in, and what was in Sigourney's pot? Nice guy. He's been a good friend of mine since I was that. small. Like Mr. Teddy. Oh, you always seem to grumble yes, when you mention Sigourney. Just like Mr. Teddy. Yeah, that's a exactly why. Friend. Aw, Mr. Teddy. And guess what? Now we continue. To, now there's going to be even more uh, during the new credits. Check this out. Okay. Was this a new track composed for the retro Scott? No, 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 no. This is a, this was already in the original game. I wonder what's for dinner. Yes, Mom. I wonder what York named his daughter. How's your doing? I don't know. He's calling me Emily again. Oh, dear. Oh. He must be losing his memory. Oh. Zach is going to see now. Michelle Louise. Oh, let me guess. He calls Not his Emily. daughter Emily. Michelle Louise. Right? Her actual name is Michelle Louise Morgan. I know you do, baby. You're just so lovely, Louise. Oh God. I'm sure that's why your grandfather mixes you up with a goddess. Interesting. But I love what uh, Michelle says now. The goddess. I don't know, dear. I'm not much like your grandfather. <laughs> Is there even such a thing? Are you as a sure goddess? about that? I believe so. But I've never met one. Mom, you're so pretty. Aww. You look like a goddess. Oh, thank you, honey. If I am a goddess, then you are an angel. <laughs> um the <d> sobs of <laughs> Mom. Do you believe those stories that Grandpa tells? You believe them, Louise? They're all just made-up stories, dear. All fiction. Totally like fiction. So all my picture book stories aren't true? <laughs> don't switch things around, Louise. You, you are definitely your grand... Let's dodge the question. <laughs> you are definitely your grandfather's granddaughter, Louise. Here, take this dinner to your grandfather. Go on while it's still hot. Mom, I understand what Grandpa's talking about. Oh. I've got Mr. Teddy, just like Grandpa's York. So yeah, she did understand the message. Um, uh, despite everything, she's a smart kid. So that's what was in the past. Super. Are you even surprised? I actually do like that that resolution. It's a nice uh, resolution, and we're gonna get an even better resolution after the credits. Again, oh. again, it, it, it's the ending of this new uh, this new subplot starts a bit iffy, but it manages to turn around and really conclude very strongly, as you guys are about to see. And from what you told me, this is what apparently started to give the DP community hope. Yes, uh, very good. We're about to get, ladies and gentlemen, the first ever that premonition two tease. Which is why, Tail, unlike you, I was awesomely hyped, but I wasn't as surprised as you might have th might have thought. Because this has been a thing that's been up in the air for a while. How long, though? 
Well, that's the thing, Joe. But obviously, this is not exactly a, a, a big money-making franchise. So obviously, it took some work for Swery to finally be able to get this game made. Well, or, 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 or rather, the money-making this... franchise. Like this game had kind of a reputation as, uh, unfortunately, a not well put together game. And those are well, it's harder to make sequels for those than it is to make for you know the guaranteed money makers or the good ones. Fortunately, Rising Star Games um, is a be uh, believes in this franchise, so I'm really grateful for them for publishing the, the sequel. Oh yeah. Thank you for playing. <laughs> Shout. <laughs> We were, that's the thing, that's because we're really, really thankful to you for playing. We need yes, everyone playing you. as much I as possible. I want to be able to play this game with my hearing intact, thank you very much. Sugar donuts will satisfy a small amount of your hunger. <clears throat> and another loading screen. <laughs> okay. Oh no, it's Enter the Dragonfly, loading screens for loading screens. Oh god. So there you go, now we get to see a, no a different version of the, after of the afterlife scene from the original. This... guess what? Zack passed oh. on, and now he finally gets to be reunited with Yorick and Emily. Aww. Hey, how could you get to be young, but I'm old? Because they die young, and, and, and Zack died old. Yeah, pretty much. Can I at least save this ridiculous mustache? That's a really nice... <laughs> Alright, ju just for that, it's a nice conclusion. Thank you. And let me guess, it's his granddaughter humming that in the back. It also, it also works still on the meta sense that this director's cut was us, the fans, reuniting with York uh, after three years. So it does work on that meta level still. I love this. So he, well, hey, at least back and now guess what? Again. Guess who's, about, uh, guess who's gonna talk to us now? York? York. Zach. Um, it's great to see you. It is great to see you again! You? I can't. I can, I can barely I see you. you. The whole time. You probably couldn't see me. But I still you felt can't. Presence nearby, right, Zach? I never thought you'd get married and have a family. Aww. Well. <laughs> I spent years honing my profiling skills, but I never saw that one coming. Huh. That's what makes humans so interesting. And that's why I just can't leave you guys alone. Well, I wouldn't have it well, I wouldn't have it any other way, York. Seeing you look so happy is the best thing I could ever ask for. Thank you, York. Hold on. Anyway, Zach, did you see the newspaper today? As it turns out, over the last three months. There's been a string of bizarre incidents near New Orleans. Oh! oh. <laughs> sudden strike of nausea. And then they completely lose control of their bodies. Some have already had two months of only being able to walk backwards. Does that make you feel anything? It makes me Oh, it sad. does! I makes me feel concerned. Too, Deeply concerned. Yeah. So what, are we supposed to solve it from the afterlife? So, York, when do we leave? 2020. In 2020, yes. <laughs> oh god, don't tell me. Okay, Zach. I thought that's what you'd say. Well then. It's time to wake up, Zach. Wait, so we wasn't AKA, actually AKA, dead? AKA, I'm really trying hard to make a sequel, so please wait. And for news. Yeah, like, ugh. Can, can you? When, when did this? When did this one come out? Twenty fourteen. Uh, can you please give me seven more years? I'm trying to sleep here. <laughs> <laughs> wow. so, so there you go, Tail. That was the first proper Mom! tease outside of. Oh, right. oh, God. oh. Where did he go? What? Where did he go? Well, to the afterlife, like we just saw. He he died. Yeah, but apparently then York told him to wake up, so maybe it was just him taking a break in the afterlife. <laughs> well, that was, that, that, that was clearly the most meta York has ever been, clearly talking to us, the audience. By the way, uh, Zach, there's a new string of bizarre accents near New Orleans. For the record, for those who don't know in the audience, that's where the sequel takes place. The prequel okay, bits, right, at least. Right. <laughs> I will say this. I'm tempted to get the Switch version just to be able to enjoy the director's cut now. I mean... Don't get
wrong. I mean, I like those extra scenes, especially that last extra scene, which yeah. is now the perfect lead-in for Deadly Premonition 2. Again, the, the new subplot starts a bit iffy, but it manages to turn around and end really strongly. So, real good. Um, that's the thing, Jova. Unfortunately, the Switch version removes this new subplot, these new scenes. What? Uh, huh? Uh, that's because, Jova, um... According to according, the idea was it's called Deadly Premonition Origins, and by Origins they mean the original one. Here's the problem: they didn't actually. Here's the problem: they didn't actually port the original 2010 release. They just took the director's cut and removed the new scenes, basically. That, I don't. That's a load of shit. I know. So let me get this straight: they literally <laughs> went to the effort of demaking the game, taking stuff the direct, out. Of the Switch version is literally the director's cut, but with none of the perks. Oh, so wow. it's basically so it's wow. basically deadly premonition the cut. I mean, hmm. the only way I could, the only reason I could see them doing that is that they're hinting at this becoming more of a recurring franchise, so they don't want you know your, I mean, sorry, Zach's ending to be you know set in stone and whatnot. But come on, it's interesting. It's interesting because uh, some of us, uh, some of the, a lot of the DP fans, when they heard of this, was one. Wait, so does that mean that the new subplot is no longer canon? But uh, I'm gonna have to wait and play the sequel before I can confirm anything for you guys. I haven't spoiled mm. myself because I don't want to. Um, I want to experience the story firsthand. Um, by the way, I love. By the way, a little a little joke. A little, I know this is a side, but I'll be quick. When it, I, already from watching the first tower, I already love the new dialogue because uh, one of the one of the new piece, the first pieces of movie trivia York does. Remember this game? The game takes place in two thousand five, right? He says, "By the way, Zach, I found out. Th I've I've just found this new movie called The Island, directed by Michael Bay. I get the feeling this Michael Bay is going to be a, a a great new force in artistic filmmaking." <laughs> I mean, you know what? Okay, you know what? To be fair, back then he was making stuff like that and The Rock, which, as we covered in our commentary, uh, was four years awesome. before he made uh, Pearl Harbor, which was god awful, oh, but and, and Armageddon. Sure, yeah. But anyway, we're not here to talk about um, Michael Bay. Let's just uh, tell. I know this. You've been very quiet. Uh, what do you think of this new cutscenes? Well, actually, I did mention the. Um... The new cutscenes, in you know what we want to tell, are fine. It's just the way they're presented. That's uh, honestly the thing that I dislike the most about the, the, these directors' cut changes. Yeah, let me guess. You don't like the whole obvious. Oh, it kind of ruins the stakes because we know. No, no, that... no, 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 Jova, Jova, Jova. The way they look, you know. It's a vis um, the visual presentation. He means the way the character ah. moves, uh, the way they are composed. It's so removed from what the game looked and moved like, you know. It feels really different. Dare I ask if these cutscenes maybe are presented better in the PC version? They are. They actually are, to be oh. fair. Oh. So uh, the PC version did some good. The PC version can be the best version of the director's cut. If you can run it without problems, that is. With, that's, the, that's the big thing. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Shirei. Your thoughts on the new cutscenes, the new subplot about Zack uh, reuniting with York and Zack, and of course the big tease for the sequel. What do you think? The ending is uh, my favorite of the cutscenes. The uh, the bits in between where you know he's telling the story to his um, granddaughter, the, mm -hmm. um, granddaughter, yeah, yep, that, yep that, those are, those are fine. Like they're they're you know a nice addition. No, the ending is the ending is um, the best one for it yeah and um yeah it, it seems you guys really did know about the sequel for a long time we did mm. well us dp fans have been patiently waiting uh <laughs> for the sequel yeah i'm curious was as the to switch, what you're... Uh, hmm? I, i'm sorry yeah you go first was the switch because i know you you knew it was coming anyway but was the sudden drop of it in the direct is still a bit of a surprise to you Oh, it was. I mean, I knew it was going to happen eventually because uh, Swery did assure us uh, that, that every time he was asked about it on Twitter, Swery would just say, I have no news uh, to share at the moment, but uh, it's still technically a reality. But, yeah, I was uh, just asking because I was wondering if there was any, you know, little build up just before the direct, maybe, but I guess not. No, it was uh, it was clearly that it's good that Swery wanted to to surprise us when we least expected it. Clearly, which was well, great. Yeah, that certainly it's happened. An accomplice. 
yeah but no that, those are all my thoughts in fact, in fact, in fact that's another, nice. in fact to go back to the my problems with the new art the new uh, graphics of this retros cut. That's one of the big reasons I was so relieved with the the, the art direction of the of the sequel because the sequel is, in my opinion, much looks much better than how the director's <laughs> cut looks. So it, they they breathe color back into the world. Thank God. Um, in fact, the cell shaded look is perfect for this kind of game. So I'm definitely grateful for that. At least. Um, yeah. Any anything else to say? Want to add, Shirai? Mm. Uh, Jova. Anything, yeah, anything you I, want to add? I actually really do like the additions here and there. You know, they're nice and whatnot. Again, I do wonder if the reason they made Deadly Premonition Origins is like you said, maybe they're making that non-canon because they have now some sequels in mind in the mix here and there. I don't know. It, it's a weird movie the way. But yeah, honestly, I really dig them here and there. Okay, I will say that it might border on somewhat taking out some of the stakes, although I'll admit the twist that, you know, Zack is actually, you know, well, Zack was Zack. Well, he, well, he, well, here's the thing, Joe. We have to remember from the perspective of a newcomer. When, when, you're, when you're watching those cutscenes for the first time, if you're a newbie, you don't know who that old man is. Uh, like, especially because you might be thinking, oh, it sounds a bit like York, maybe he is York as an old man, but then when you see the, the white hair, uh, it, it just shows, it just, you just think, oh, he's, his, his hair is white because it's, because he's old. So there's no, so technically a newcomer would still be none the wiser, I would argue. Oh, true, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, definitely when it comes to that twist, yeah. I'm talking more so about the stakes of, oh, if we're worried about whether or not he'll survive or whatnot, come to think of it. Those stakes probably wouldn't be too bad here and yeah, there. I don't know. There's never any point in the story where we have one of those "Oh, York might die here" moments. So I don't think that that really matters, to be honest, per per personally. Mm, yeah, it's not too bad in that regard. But yeah, honestly, I actually do like the framing device of him telling his daughters. Although I gotta say, it's kind of hilarious that he thinks that a story like this is actually appropriate to be telling his daughter, unless he's. Uh, you know, unless he's doing what Stanley Kubrick did for the kid who plays Danny in The Shining and uh, colorifying it up, shall we say. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I, for I did forget to ask this to Shiro and Teo. Do you guys have anything to, you want to uh, talk about the way the director's cut looks since you are a bit more tolerant to it than, than I am? Do you guys I have think I already mentioned what he needed to. I, I'm, actually, I'm actually okay with um, the new lack of filters and even the, the redesign of the buildings. The frame rate is probably the most, um, you know, infuriating thing. Sure. Uh, what about I you, Jiro? It's... Well, it's, it, it is nice that some scenes got more color, but yeah, some of them are a little too dark for my liking. Sure. Mm -hmm. That's that's really it, though. Joba. It's like you said, they made some things better. But some things worse as well here and there. It's a weird uh, f thing on the fritz with that. Mm -hmm. uh, Dwibs, uh, your thoughts? Well, I've already made my uh, points clear as well. You so uh, yeah, so you so you're on my things. so you're kind of on my camp where you don't really like the new visuals either, if I understand correctly. I mean, so a few are better, but some are like oh, I can barely see Zach in that ending one for a start. Sure, yeah. No, so I from what I can understand, Pedro, your preferred way would probably be if, you know, we had, say, the new cutscenes put into I guess the original version. You know, it's kind of weird that they didn't update the original version on 360 as well, well with that's like a, a patch or update. Well, here's the thing. Allow me to remind once again. Uh, and for those who want to more details, everybody, go check out Ecocidio Media's uh, retrospective on the... Just just go on YouTube. That's the Premonition Retrospective, and it's the first thing that comes up. So you can check that video. Basically, Joe, remember, first, the 360 version. Then Access Games ported that the game to the ps3 and that ps3 japanese exclusive version already had the draw distance issues and some of the load and frame rate issues that we would see in the director's cut then after that toy box games took that ps3 port and made the director's cut <laughs> that we just saw here then they ported that director's cut to the pc then they ported that pc port of the 
of the director's cut to the Switch while removing the new stuff. And God damn. What you're playing on the Switch, Jova, is a port of a port of a port of a port. And one that's been stripped and Frankenstein put back together, it sounds like. It's it's flat out like Sonic Adventure 1, where the Steam version of Sonic Adventure 1 is a port of the of the, the Xbox 360 version, which by itself was a port of the 2004 PC version, which by its own was a port of the GameCube port. It, it's, <laughs> it's, it's flat out, it's just as much of a mess as Sonic Adventure's ports. It's <laughs> a journey. <laughs> it seems to be kind of a trend that the more ports something gets, more often than not, the worse it gets. Like, you'd think the idea is for each port to get better. Unfortunately, Jova, both Sonic Adventure and Dream Dead Premonition were unlucky with the developers involved in these ports. I'll say. All right, everybody. So that just leaves me. Let me just quickly before we end this. Uh, let me just mention one something that because this is also something that was very. What well, this ending also was very special to me because when I first played Dead Premonition, it was back in 2010, and this was before I got married. For the record, because I got married in uh, early 2012. Uh, wonder, what attracted you to the game in the first place? I saw some bits of it on Spoonie's channel, and I also loved what I saw, and I just and I saw the word of mouth. Not to mention, Joe, but remember, I'm European, so I had to wait until Halloween of 2010 to get it, because that's when Rising Star <laughs> Games finally but So I had enough time to see for myself how much praise that Jim Sterling gave it, how much a lot of people who were playing it saying, dude, play this game, this game is really awesome. So uh, by the time the game came out here in Europe, it already, the word of mouth was already all over on the internet. Ah. So, so uh, it, it, it was basically a combination of various factors. But back when this the Retro's Cut came out, I was once again really touched by this new ending because uh, remember, I in between both versions, the original and the director's cut, I got married. So that line of York saying to me, I would never thought that you would get married and have a family. And it, wow. it, really, it really made me go, well, what can I say, York? Again, yeah. I just, again, if there's one thing about this game that uh, absolute triumph is the bond between you and the game. Like mm -hmm. it's like it's it just goes above and beyond in making you uh fall in love with this wonderful protagonist that is just so cool but yeah that's all i wanted to say aside from that not a big fan of the director's cut but fortunately thanks to microsoft of all people we are the the, the 360 version is being preserved you know, on the xbox consoles so there's that uh so basically everybody if you don't have if well, that being said everybody free, getting a 360 is pretty cheap so if you if you still can ha afford an Xbox One, uh, by all means you can play on a 360. The 360 original, even without the slight improvements from the Xbox One, are still very good. That's almost people were introduced to the game to begin with anyway. So consider that. Anyway, everybody, that was Deadly Premonition. I hope you enjoyed this as much as we did. And but before we go, the the rest of the guys here have actually tried out the Deadly Premonition PC port. Uh, I've already recounted how it works for me during the playthrough, so I guess I'll leave it to the rest of the guys. Jova, how did the how did that attempt go for you? Miraculously, Pedro, it actually worked. Wow, well, it worked in the sense that I got it to boot, and I was able to control it. All right. That said, boy, did it perform horribly the whole time I played it. <laughs> oh, like, okay. I mean, don't get me wrong. It never crashed, amazingly. And I am uh, still playing through it to this day. But, yeah, it works. By God, my laptop is one of the chosen ones that actually That works. being said, you have to run the game at... Okay, what frame rate do you estimate the game was running at? It went to zero several times, but let's so see. So basically, <laughs> a photo slideshow. Okay, okay, okay. It's weird how much it's, it slides from a an oddly higher frame rate to frame rates as low as zero. I'd say it averaged out it. I'm going to be generous, 23 frames per second. I'm gonna, and remember, folks, uh, for the audience, Jova's PC is much more powerful than something like my toaster. Hmm. Interesting. So, um, yeah, and and yes, and yes, I tried using the DP fix, 
didn't do much. What about the the Windows 95, 98 XP compatibility mode that people often recommend as well? Because that sometimes fixes things. Uh, I guess my laptop wasn't chosen in that regard. Since okay, it didn't really seem to do much, I'm afraid. Okay, fine. Well, is it really that random? Jesus, it's it, it is random. I assure you, it's that's it, poor coding for you. It, that, that's poor coding. For, yeah, what Teo said. I was about to say that. Uh, Teo, um, what about you? Like you, like you said, I actually was pos was in possession of the game for a long time. Actually, I did got it from Steam sale and never touched it for backlog problems. Of, you know, if you're a Steam user, you know exactly what I mean. But anyway, I, I, actually, I unfortunately do. <laughs> I, I actually booted it for this experiment and uh, mm. similar to Drova, it never crashed, but the performance was unbearable and the sound mixing is atrocious. Like even, even, by, even by tweaking it, uh, the sound, the, the voice files were still up the wazoo. I can tell this though. Um, I like the the fact that the app that cuts in for the director's cut look better than the one on the PS3 version and they look actually more organic like instead of being FN, look at, uh, sort of like FMVs they were done properly in game this time around mm -hmm. um, and, the, and, the, and the frame rate for those actually is consistently good but as soon as the proper game start with York in the red room with the twin angels um, it goes to I'm gonna be generous 15. Uh, it, <laughs> I mean, I kind of know an experience uh, for bad frame rate with a PC version of Final Fantasy 14, so I kind of understood how much it was going. I applied uh, first just the DP fix, uh, and it didn't do anything. It, the performance was literally the same. Same goes for <laughs> the compatibility, you know, uh, with previous version of Windows. I don't know exactly what it must, what it can potentially trigger, but it followed the instruction and not really anything changes. So similar to Java, my PC seems to be chosen, but if I had to watch a slideshow, I might as well watch YouTube <laughs> videos. That's Next. Right, the, the interesting Tio, thing. This. Your laptop can actually play a game he, that Pedro's can. I don't have a laptop, but he, still a PC. He, he, here's the interesting thing, though, Tio, that you said. Yes, it is true. That, like you said, the, the director's cut scenes do look better on the PC port. That's the thing, Tio. They're still pre-rendered. Because, and you can see this, she really can vouch for what I'm saying because I showed it to her. Um, you, if you go into the game's files, Tio, on the app data folder and then there's a movie folder there and you can see all of the pre-rendered cutscenes in the game in compressed WMV files. So right. no, so no, this, this, they this are pre-rendered. This, this explains why the frame rate doesn't lag there. They're yeah. lovely and pixely. Yeah. But yeah, that's me. Next. Shirai. Well, after a fierce battle with my laptop, yes, laptop, not PC, it ran. And it ran pretty well. So really? You're gonna be I, kidding me. Nope. Pedro can vouch for this. Yep. It, Your laptop it, it, ran it well? Yes, my laptop ran it very well. Mm. I am worthy of playing this game at what looks like a decent frame rate. But I, somebody who does not like gaming with a keyboard, am not worthy of controller access. Yes. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, uh, no, you won't yeah, ever remember. It's, it's hit and miss not only if you can run the game, but it's also hit and miss whether you can actually use a controller. And I am not worthy of controller access. So, so let me get this straight. by default, I am not worthy to play this game. So let me get this straight. So my <laughs> laptop can do this with controller access, but it performs horribly. Your lap. Um, how old is your laptop? Uh. About a year at this point. Remember, oh, she okay, changed okay. I'm not sure how old. I'm not sure how old the model is, though. I think the model itself is probably about a year and a half, two years old. So it's fairly okay. new. Okay, okay, okay. So your laptop is much younger than my laptop, mm -hmm. but yeah. still, though. I mean, well, so okay. So your laptop actually runs this game perfectly fine. The dreaded PC port. But you're cursed to not have controller support. I tried to navigate the main menu with the controller, and it's so sluggish. It took, like, I'm going to say around about 20 seconds for me to move through each option in the menu. It was horrendous. It, it was disgusting. And York would not move at all. So yeah. I switched to the keyboard, and it worked perfectly fine with just the keyboard. 
But I, I don't, I don't do that. So. <laughs> it's, it's the exact same problem I have because that's what that's the exact same problem I have. See, she and uh, and she and me were picked as the non-controller people. See, because remember, let me remind everybody: the game when it was first released on PC, it didn't have controller support. Controller support was only patched in later. Um, Apparently, not patched in well. Yeah, because you know, like uh, we're. So yeah, um, this I think this experiment I think shows my point about how utterly unoptimized and absolutely much of a train wreck the PC port of the early premonition is. Torrent, darling. Can you imagine if I tried to do this on the old Mac? <laughs> oh, you know, you know, you know. You... It would have exploded, I think. After sure, sure, sure. Knowing your luck, it probably would have worked best on the old Mac. Just to see you. Allow me to remind you too that my my computer. The computer that I used it in was the same computer that I recorded in Okuni 2 in. Yeah, uh, this is like a gaming PC. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so it should work. And trust me, the game runs beautifully at, at a flawless 60 FPS. Uh, as long as I don't use the controller, that is. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, it's a shame because I'm the one who usually is more okay to use keyboard and mouse for PC games that even, you know, that normally require controller. But uh, I guess we switch roles. Yeah. you got to love how a game that was initially on consoles was brought to PC without controller support in the first place. Because that totally makes sense. It was also still the time, a, a rough time, when Japanese companies were still, you know, not sure importing stuff to the PC. Remember, yeah. Dark Souls was kind of the gateway to that. All right, everybody. So, yeah. Um, interesting experiment. I think you'll agree with us. Uh, yes. So, yeah. And see you uh, eventually for the sequel. That the Premonition 2, a blessing in disguise. Yeah. See ya. See ya.